Today we're going to paint a path in a forest. I quite like the look of the sun rays shining through the trees, so it should make an interesting painting. I'm painting in acrylic. You're welcome to follow along in oil as well. If you prefer to follow a slower version of this tutorial, you can follow the real-time paint along class on my website. There's a link in the video description which you can click to get there. We'll start off with the background by blocking it in with a purple grey colour. To get this colour, use crimson, Payne's grey and titanium white. We'll suggest some trees and things into the distance. To get the foliage colour, add more titanium white into the mixture. Switching over to a smaller hardware brush, fill up the entire background using dabs and dashes. Turn the brush as you paint to keep all the marks random. Now add raw umber to your dark background mixture. I've used a flat angle brush to paint in the tree trunks. You could also use a soft fulbert brush. Thin down the paint as you need to make sure that you get nice long flowing strokes. Paint in a variety of tree trunks. Give them different angles, make them different thicknesses, vary how high up on the canvas you start the line and vary how far down you bring the line. This not only gives your trees character, but also varies their distance into the painting. You can now add an underpainting to either side of the path using Payne's Grey. This will give us a base for our plants later on. Block in the bottom area solid, but then gradually break up the paint using dabs and dashes as you move upwards, because that indicates that you can see in between the plants. The background is dark, and most of it will be hidden behind the sun rays. But we do want to suggest some detail for when the background is visible between the rays. To do this, use an angle brush or a fine round brush to tap in various clumps of leaves. The color I've used to do this is just an even lighter version of the original foliage grey. Paint these in random clumps to make them look like leaves on a branch. Now using titanium white and some cadmium yellow, tap in a few sunspots shining through the trees. Add more sunspots higher up and less lower down. Trees need branches, so use a rigger brush and the tree color to add a multitude of branches to your trees. We want to create distance in the back forest area, so we'll gradually add more greens coming forward. To do that, mix up a very dull green by adding cadmium yellow to Payne's grey. Then use this to suggest some green leaves on your front trees. While you're at it, use dabs and dashes to suggest some foliage in the ground area. Don't try to get any detailed bushes or anything like that. Just add random marks. Most of these will be covered up and invisible later on, after we've added in the foreground detail. But this just helps for the atmospheric perspective when we can see in between the foreground plants. Some of these trees are in the foreground, so we need to add more detail to them. Use a rigger brush and versions of grey to tap in little vertical strokes on the foreground trees, and this will give them a bark effect. You can also darken up the right hand side of the front trunks using neat Payne's grey, and this will show that the trunks are round. We now need to paint the path so that when we get to the plants and things, they will naturally overlap the path. We are going to paint the path using splatter. Before you start splattering though, use spare pieces of paper to cover up your background forest area. You don't want to accidentally destroy all that hard work. 
Use the paints that you already have on the palette and thin them down to the consistency of an ink by adding water. Now use a stiff bristle brush and your finger to splatter the paint over the path area. The more you thin the paint down, the larger the drops are going to be. So that way you can adjust the consistency of the paint to get finer or larger splatter. I also noticed some orange colors in the path, so I used cadmium yellow and a touch of crimson plus white to get that color and splatter that on. You can now carefully remove your paper masks before drying the entire painting using a hairdryer. Then leave your painting in a sunny spot for a few days so that the paint can cure. We need the paint to cure, otherwise this background paint will lift when we paint in the sun rays. Once your paint is cured, use a light orange to glaze in the sun rays. For this, I've used a soft, bright brush and a straight edge. The straight edge I'm using today is simply a scrap piece of cardboard. We need our sun rays to radiate from one central point, the sun. So I've marked a dot on the table where the sun would be. I then pivot the straight edge from this point while painting the rays. To paint the rays, use very little paint on the brush. It's just a glaze, so start at the top of the canvas and paint along the straight edge. And as you paint outwards and downwards, the paint will get less on the brush, giving you a fading out effect. Paint several rays at different angles, and once you have enough of them that you can judge the in-between ones, you can dump the straight edge and just paint freehand. Make some of the rays broader and some narrower, and that'll make it look like individual leaves and branches are blocking the sun rays from coming through, giving the sun ray that beautiful natural dappled light effect. Once done, dry the rays off using a hairdryer before you continue on to the left-hand trees. For the left-hand trees, block in the tree trunks using raw umber. Then add the shadows onto the path using Payne's Grey and White. And for this, I've used a soft, bright brush. Use the reference photo as a guide so that you can paint in natural looking shadows. As with the sun rays, use very little paint. It's just a glaze. You still want the splattered dots to shine through this shadow of yours. Now thin down your raw umber paint to an inconsistency and use a rigger brush to paint in the branches for the left hand trees. We need to add leaves growing from these branches. So if you look at your reference photo, you will see that some of the leaves are really dark while others are in full sunlight. So mix up a variety of greens going from light through to dark. I've used combinations of sap green, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, raw umber, titanium white and Payne's grey to do this. Paint the leaves in using a fine liner or a rigger brush using tiny dabbing motions. Use the branches you have painted and grow the leaves off of them. And that way you'll end up with natural looking leaves. Start with the darker leaves and gradually add lighter and lighter leaves. Constantly referencing your photograph to see which of the leaves are in sunlight. Now, using Payne's Grey and White, use your rigger brush and vertical strokes to add a bark effect to the trees. You can use several colors and several layers to build up your bark texture, and that'll make it look really, really interesting and give it beautiful dimension. Then using the same effect and a lighter grey, add some moss growing on the trees. I also use the same colour to add a few sparkles onto the leaves. We are painting a sunrise, so there are dew drops still on the leaves. Fantastic! Now we can complete the plants growing next to the path. Roughly block in the area using raw umber. 
Then mix up a dull green using sap green, raw umber, cadmium yellow and white. I have used the corner of a soft angle brush to paint in the leaves of my plants. You could also use a fine liner. Start at the end of the path and build up small little plants and bushes making them gradually larger as you move forward. I like to grow these leaves and plants in random families. Some families are big and others are small. That way you get a nice random look to your leaves, plants and bushes. Once you are happy that you have defined your bushes, you can highlight them by adding some cadmium yellow into your mix. Add these highlights onto the left hand side of each bush. To add interest to the bushes, I have also used some burnt sienna and white to indicate some dead leaves in the bushes. I have then added some of that colour onto the path as well. When adding the leaves to the path, paint them in horizontally because they are lying flat on the ground. Then squeeze in a few branches between the plants using a rigger brush. Add raw umber and white to your dead leaf colour to get the branch colour. Now add in some even brighter yellow leaves in the foreground. Things are brighter in the foreground and get duller towards the back and this gives you a feeling of distance in the plants. Brighter objects appear closer, duller objects appear further away. As you paint, add some of these colours as leaves onto the path as well. Use the same technique and colours for the plants on the left hand side of the path, except this time the sunny leaves are in the distance and the foreground leaves are in shadow. Our painting is nearly finished, so let's move on to the figures. I've sketched out the figures onto the canvas using a proportional divider. Then starting with the mother, block inner jacket using crimson and white. For the strip of shirt, I've used paints grey and white. And the pants are blocked in with neat paints grey. The shoes are paints grey and white. The face is blocked in with burnt sienna and white. And the hair is raw umber. To add depth and dimension to the figure, use lighter and darker versions of each colour to suggest the various shadings. Notice that the sun is coming from the back, so you get a bit of a halo effect around the edges. And for that I've used almost a neat white. Do the same for the little girl. Then finish off this painting by adding their cast shadows onto the ground. For this, use Payne's Grey, glazing in the same fashion as we did with the sun rays. The shadow is dark against the figure and then fades out as it recedes away from the figure. And by fading it like this, you not only get a more natural looking shadow, it also saves you from trying to paint a perfect silhouette on the ground. And with that your painting is finished, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll leave a link here to the real-time version of this class, so that you can go and follow that. Then before you go, please like, subscribe and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about the class and which class you would like me to do next. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.